Russian specialists have developed a doomsday first-person view FPV drone for monitoring background radiation and ensuring the security of personnel in the event of nuclear attacks. The CEO of Russian unmanned aerial vehicle developer Center for Integrated Unmanned Solutions, Dmitry Kuzyakin, told TASS. I am confident that common sense will prevail and the world will refrain from using nuclear weapons and our doomsday drone will never be needed. And yet we believe that it would be a crime not to prepare for even the worst scenarios. Our specialists have developed a doomsday drone for monitoring background radiation and ensuring the security of personnel as part of the Krust project, he said. According to him, it is a small drone that can be stowed compactly along with ground-based equipment. The flight time of the Doomsday Drone is up to 20 minutes in the active maneuvering mode. The range of operation depends on the terrain and the condition of signal passage, ranging between 500 meters and 2 kilometers, Kuzyakin explained. To date, the Center for Integrated Unmanned Solutions has developed and brought to fruition more than 20 scenarios. These include, for example, conducting assault operations in urban environments and buildings for counter-terrorist activities or operating from armored vehicles, he said. We have yet to explore more of the FPV industry. The Krust program and the Doomsday Drone are not the only areas of work for the center in the combat use of FPV drones that is new to everyone. We are only starting off in this field, Kuzyakin concluded. First-person view drones are becoming instrumental weapons of war, particularly in Ukraine. Russian military personnel deployed in Ukraine requested such a capability after registering significant losses of combat vehicles through FPV drones. Defense Minister Andriy Belusov recently announced that approximately 4,000 FPV drones are being manufactured daily, translating to about 167 drones per hour. Almost no one in Brussels hopes that Ukraine will regain its lost territories, but no one wants to talk about it, at least officially. The Welt publication spoke to several Western diplomats who explained what such gloomy views are connected with and how they see the end of the war. As the newspaper sources say, the development of the situation in the combat zone for Ukraine is much worse than is often presented in public discourse and, in their opinion, a breakthrough of the second line of defense by Russian troops in Ukraine is only a matter of time. That's why Western military and diplomats are predicting a ceasefire in the conflict zone within the next six to nine months, regardless of who wins the US presidential election. Given the current circumstances, I see no other way out than a swift ceasefire. This situation could last for years and local ceasefire violations are likely to occur again and again, one diplomat noted. At the same time, the publication's interlocutor emphasized that the West should take advantage of the pause provided to increase its defense capability and then it will be able to keep Putin from launching a new offensive. The decline in confidence in Ukraine's victory is explained by the fact that the West will probably not increase military support for Kyiv in the future to a level that would allow it to launch a successful large-scale counter-offensive. In addition, Welt notes, the West is too afraid of an escalation of the conflict and Putin's unpredictability. According to military experts, U.S. President Joe Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz fear that under excessive pressure, the Russian president may use tactical nuclear weapons. In an interview with Le Monde, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky emphasized that the issue of surrendering Ukrainian territories in exchange for peace with the Russian Federation cannot be taken without the Ukrainian people. At the same time, he noted that no one has officially made such a proposal. Zelensky noted that the surrender of Ukrainian territories in any case is not the best option and would effectively mean a victory for Vladimir Putin. The Ukrainian president is also not thrilled with the idea of simply freezing the conflict because Russia could later make a new attempt to seize Ukrainian territories.